Hello, everyone. Today, we will talk about a heuristic evaluation. No worries if you've never heard of this term before. We're going to break it all down, including the name. But before we dive in, who am I? Well, my name is Vincent Brathwaite. I am a design leader, speaker, and educator. What exactly does that all mean? Well, I started my professional design journey over 20 years ago in 1997 as a product design intern. Since then, I've spoken at over 40 events around design and business. I've taught over 300 people in the areas of UX design and visual design. Currently, I am the head of global leadership at Envision. Now I've got plenty to share about UX design, but today we're only gonna focus on one of the methods that's vital in your UX design journey. I'm gonna spend about seven-ish minutes giving you an overview of a heuristic evaluation. Again, just an overview. I'll be doing a deeper dive in another video, so stay tuned for that. For now, here's what you'll walk away knowing at the end of this video. One, what is a heuristic evaluation? Two, why should you care? And three, how is it used in UX design? You ready? Let's go. So first let's break down this name. Uh, for those of you who have never heard of it, a heuristic essentially is a mental shortcut. Got it? All right. So the second word evaluation is essentially an assessment or a judgment of a thing. So in other words, a heuristic evaluation is a fancy way of saying an assessment based on mental shortcuts or criteria rooted in science, specifically behavioral psychology. It's a tool commonly used in the UX design industry. What's great about this evaluation tool is that it allows you, the person listening to me, to quickly prove the value of UX design methodologies to improve the digital platform and ultimately the business goals for your client. Something else to note about a heuristic evaluation is that it's one of the few methods in UX that doesn't require engagement with users or customers of the business. So you don't have to worry about trying to recruit people to conduct this assessment. I would say that that calls for a standing ovation, but no need to get out of your seat just yet. So you might be saying to yourself, but wait, Vincent, I thought everything we do in UX design requires users, hence the name user experience. Well, sorry to bust your UX bubble, but that's actually not true. Not everything, at least. Most things, yes, but we'll cover that in my future course. So again, stay tuned. Get it? Future, because the name and okay, well, you got it. So anyway, a heuristic evaluation is one of very few methods where you can lean on your experience and knowledge to encourage a business to implement UX design. A heuristic evaluation is also a UX research methodology that can be done at any point in the design journey. It can be done prior to your kickoff meeting to establish scope, or it can be done as a checkpoint to evaluate designs. So why should you care? Well, one reason is because it can significantly reduce the friction when starting a project, meaning you will be able to surface very quickly what's working well with the website and what's not. Conducting a heuristic evaluation requires you to comb through a website or an application and identify areas of success and improvements based on a set of predetermined and universal criteria. This in turn provides clear data that you can then present to a client, showing them how much they can benefit from hiring you, the UX designer, to help them make more money. I mean, isn't that why they hired you in the first place? Shake your head, yes. Okay, great, glad to know we're on the same page. It also serves as an educational device. A what? Yes, you immediately become the expert on human behavior with regards to their website. Okay, well, maybe not an expert per se in human behavior, but you will be able to at least help them understand why certain things aren't working as they'd like or hoped based on user behavior. Conducting a heuristic evaluation also requires that you identify various user flows that supports the business goals and the user needs to ultimately solve any challenges that are showing up. It's also a way to introduce the power of UX to someone that is unaware of what it is and what it can do. It's kind of like giving them an appetizer before you present the rest of a delicious entree or main course. 
Now, I'm a bit of a foodie, so don't mind me and my food analogies, or you can mind them and let me know what your favorite dish is in the comments. Now let's talk about how it's used. To do this, I want to dive a little deeper on what a UX designer has to consider when conducting a heuristic evaluation. Here are some things at minimum. They must consider the behaviors, mindset, and goals of the target users. A UX designer must be objective, and focus on the usability of the product and not their personal feelings. Evaluate more than just one page of a website or app. And finally, they must consider and measure all of the selected parts of the interface using the same evaluation method, such as a scale or a rating system. Now, there are several heuristic evaluation methods available that UX designers use. There's the UX Honeycomb by Peter Morvel that was created in 2004, and it uses the following criteria. Looking at whether something is useful, desirable, valuable, credible, accessible, findable, usable. Then there's the Abby method created by Abby Covert create in 2012. And she uses the following criteria, some of which you'll notice that I mentioned in the UX Honeycomb. Findable, accessible, clear, communicative, useful, credible, controllable, valuable, learnable, and delightful. And then finally, there's the 10 usability heuristics created by the Nielsen Norman Group, also known as NNG, in 1994 and was most recently updated a few years ago. And they use the following criteria. One, visibility of system status. Two, match design system and the real world. Three, user control and freedom. Four, consistency and standards. Five, error prevention. Six, recognition rather than recall. Seven, flexibility and efficiency of use. Eight, aesthetic and minimalist design. Nine, help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. And 10, help and documentation. Now, I'm sure after listening to me share with you these few heuristic evaluation methods, you probably have one of these questions floating in your mind. Which is the most used? Is there a standard? How do you determine which one of these heuristic evaluation methods to use? Well, guess what? I have an answer for all three. And here it is. It depends. Sorry, probably not the answer you were looking for, but it's true. And it does. One of the things to note about UX design is that with this method and many of the other methods, there actually is no one way or straight line to solve a design challenge. They can all be used in remix to suit the UX design professional and the task at hand. So now you know. A heuristic evaluation is an assessment tool that helps you quickly uncover challenges in a website or an app or any digital product. You caring about this now helps you to provide value to your client in a very simple way. Now, many UX designers, again, use this by first finding a method that suits them and then conduct it by being consistent and objective. Now, I know this wasn't enough time to really dive into a heuristic evaluation, so make sure to sign up for my course so that we can dive deep into how to use at least one of the heuristics that I mentioned earlier and begin evaluating your first website. So I'll see you in the future. Get it? The name, the course coming up? Okay, fine. Bye, everyone.